I built the cabinets for my laundry from scratch, which is something I've never done before. This is what my laundry used to look like, and this is what I plan for it to look like in the near future, and this is where I'm at. In the last video, I showed the process of building the wall cabinets, and now I'm ready to build the doors. Last time I made doors for the tall cabinets, but they were made out of plywood, and this time I'm using poplar wood to avoid some of the problems that I ran into using plywood. I thought that using solid wood will make the job go smoother, but I ended up having some complications in other ways. To get the size of the doors, I did a bunch of math using my drawing as a visual, which was pretty helpful. I don't go into the details of this because this project can look different for everyone, but the shaker doors are made out of five pieces, two rails, two styles, and a center panel. So this is gonna be a two-tone laundry, and the cabinets that I'm making now are gonna be painted, which is why I'm using poplar wood. I was going to use plywood because I have plenty of waste that could have worked to make the doors, but then I have to edge band all the way around it and it's a little tedious and time consuming. I decided to just spend a little bit more and get the right type of wood and just save me a lot of work because these are the perfect width. So all I have to do is like cut them to size and put them together to make the door. I started cutting the wood to size, but then I noticed the weather was rapidly changing. I work a full-time job, so my days off are the only time I have to get this done. So I try to push through this, whether it rains or shine. So I put up the tent and now I can continue working. So I have all the pieces cut and I cut them slightly larger than what they have to be because the way I ensure that they are all the same exact size, I stack them all on top of each other. I then clamp them, making sure that they're all flush over here. I got done cutting, I made pocket holes on the top and bottom part of the frame. To make the doors, you want to have them laid out. Make sure the ugly side, if there's an ugly side, goes to the back. So this is where the pocket screws are going to be also in the back of the door. So see, side looks pretty, ugly, pretty, ugly. I then use wood glue for extra strength before I attach the frame with pocket screws. Some of the wood had imperfections, so I repaired it using wood filler. To cover the pocket holes, I like using these plugs that already come sized for pocket holes. I use wood glue so they can stay in place, and I use a mallet to get them as flush as possible. So I ran out of the pocket holes, plug thingies, and I looked in my scrap wood pile and I found a wooden dowel that happens to be the perfect size to plug the rest of the pocket holes. This is a 3 8 wooden dowel, also works for this.
So I was doing this, I figured out a little trick. It was probably always a thing, but <laughs> I, I just figured it out. So if you cut this the right size, so this is the side that I just cut off. It looks just like a pocket hole plug. So if you cut it the right size, you can actually use that cut to plug the next hole. I did it too big. Yeah, so it's a little too big, but I can cut it. The last one I did happened to be like the right size. To make the pocket plug smooth and to prep the frame for painting, I sand it with 150 grit. I then did some last minute touch up with the wood putty and then I hand sanded the edges of the frame to get rid of the sharp edges. So now I'm gonna use the router to make an edge here all the way around the back so I can put a panel. I'm gonna use a quarter of an inch plywood so I can have a flush panel here in the back. And for the bit, I'm using that one right there. So 316 uh, rabbiting with bearing. The 316 that I have, I think is too small. It doesn't leave enough room to nail the panel. So I have to be very careful, but it's the only one I have at the moment. So you see how with the router, this is curved over here. It's easier when you cut the plywood panel, so I'm gonna do a straight cut if it is square like that. So to square it off, I use a wood chisel. I draw the lines where they meet, and then that right there is what I gotta cut off. If you don't wanna do that, you can just cut off the plywood and just cut the corners around it like it is here. That's what I did on the last set of doors that I did for the tall cabinet. But then I noticed that it was, you know, there's barely any space to catch there, so it was hard to nail in place. So that's why I'm just gonna make it square. I cut quarter inch plywood to place on the back of the frame. And then to secure it, I use wood glue and nails. I used wood putty on the back of the door to cover the gap between the panel and the frame and then I sanded it to make it smooth. I'm now getting ready to do the hinges and to drill for the hinges I'm using a Craig jig which is pretty amazing because all you have to do is line it up and drill the hole. I then lined up the doors to drill for the hinges inside the cabinet and I basically aligned the doors exactly where they go then I marked and followed the instructions that came with the hinges.
They came out so good and I'm pretty happy with them. It wasn't hard to make them at all and I didn't run into any major complications. So let's get to painting. So today's not a good day to paint. It is really humid. It might be raining on and off, but I want to get this done. So I'm just going to go for it and hope for the best. I'm in good company, right Misty? Looks good. I'm all done, but I'm not really happy with how they look. Now it's just the primer, so they should be okay. I can sand them down. Uh, they're very rough. And uh, I think part of it, I didn't clean them well because I sanded these a lot. So they look like it has a lot of dust <laughs> caked into the primer. I did wipe them, but I guess I didn't do a good enough job. But once I sand them, they should be smooth and then I can paint them. But I'm worried about the primer being uneven because I was fighting with the sprayer the entire time. I also found another problem right here. It like bubbled up and it looks like, I thought it was just a primer, but I think that is from the plywood veneer. Like it just bubbled up in there. So I might have to like cut that out and fill it up with wood putty. So I'm hand sanding it with 220 and that seems to make it as smooth as I want it. I'm doing hand sanding because if I do the sanding with the power tool, it's just gonna take the primer off and there's no point on that. So another thing I wanted to show you is, see that little gap there? You don't really see it anywhere else. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of caulking and maybe I'll do it all the way around because that wouldn't bother me if it was even all the way around. But because it's just in that section, it bothers me. So I'm just gonna caulk it. Before I could move forward, I needed to do the repairs on all the imperfections. This was actually a little bit frustrating for me because the paint was one of the last things I had to do and I didn't think I would have to do multiple repairs. And if I only knew that it was about to get worse. I have picked the worst day to do painting. It is raining. It's going to be raining all day. I have a cold, so if I sound different, <clears throat> I am a little under the weather. That was the thunder. But I'm in Florida, I can't really escape the rain, so. And I am determined to finish this because I have been working on these cabinets for way too long now. I'm embarrassed to say how long. <laughs> But I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna hope that the doors don't get ruined out here. I kind of feel safe under my tent though. I think it'll be okay. It's just very humid so it'll probably take longer for the paint to dry. Compressor's not working. I think it's because it's plugged in over there and it started raining and it tripped. And now I'm stuck over here. It was supposed to be light rain. At least 
least that's what the weather app said. I wouldn't know it would have been like this. I probably would have not started, but it said light rain throughout the day. That's why I took the risk. Now I'm regretting my decisions because I'm stuck under a tent. I'm sure you already knew this, but this was a very bad idea. I knew I should not be out here painting or trying to paint when it's gonna rain, but I thought it was just gonna be sprinkles throughout the day. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give up for today. This was a terrible idea. <laughs> like that coat of paint never happened. <laughs> I just was able to wipe it right off. Okay. I should try again tomorrow. If it's not raining. So after the first coat, the uh, doors were a little rough. So I did a quick light sand with 400 grit and I did that by hand and it was a wet sand and because the 400 grit makes it really smooth and I like how it feels once you sand it with 400 grit. And then I did a second coat, but it looks like it's going to need a third coat because the paint still doesn't look even. I think it's the sprayer. Like, I don't think I'm using the right sprayer. I'm still kind of learning. I've used the sprayer before and it's worked good, but this time for this project it is not. I have a bigger sprayer, but honestly I've been <laughs> lazy about using it because it just takes forever to clean it and I probably should have used it from the beginning. I think after the third coat this should be ready to go. When I made the wall cabinet and we put it in, I don't know if you noticed that there's a gap here. So I actually made fillers out of plywood and painted them to match. So all it is is a piece of wood that just goes flush with this piece here and it just makes it look like one piece from wall to wall. I secured the fillet pieces with screws and I put them behind the hinges so that they wouldn't be noticeable. I then used caulking to cover any remaining gaps and to give it that nice built-in look. And now with the wall cabinets done and the doors all finished, I can now start working on the broom closet, which actually has access to the back of the washer and dryer. And hopefully that project goes a lot smoother than these doors. No, you gotta be kidding me. It's cracked. 